All right, hello, and welcome back to my 2.5D RPG in Unity tutorial thing. Today, we're going to be covering uh, maps, which will be divided into two parts. Two parts, sorry. This first one will be uh, concerning like a mini map, you know, like shows like the level you're in, nearby enemies, shit like that. And then next week will be uh, like the world map, so you can select places to fast travel and move around and shit. So, yeah, first off, I'll just show you uh, if I go to the map tab here. We'll see that we've got a fairly basic visual representation of the world we're in. So you can see there's this like little rocky outcropping bit, and then there's this one here, and then you know you can see the edges of the world and that. And we can see that containers are marked in blue on the map, and NPCs are marked in red. And if we transition to the other scene we have, so I'm just press E. We can see that the map gets redrawn to represent the new one. So you can see that the uh, you've got the roads and the buildings and shit. And you, you see like little gaps, uh, of, like just transparency where you can see the world through it. I'll explain what that is in a minute. Well, when I get to it, but you can see that the NPC is getting uh, they're moving, just moving about and shit. So yeah, let's go see how this was all done. Okay, so our map. This is our map tags to generate a class. This is basically just what controls uh, actual like drawing of the uh, map. First off, we've got a public texture two D, which doesn't need to be public, but it's just a map base. Uh, basically, when a scene is loaded, we will uh, like go through all the tile maps in the scene, and then sort of like draw, well, try and get a representation of them. So we'll use the sprite color database, which I'll go in a minute, to convert the sprites and tiles to like a color that can represent them. And then we basically store that image in this texture duty for the map base. Uh, we only do this once because we don't need to redraw it every to recalculate it every frame. So we just save a bit of performance there, and we combine this with a like map that reflects where like NPCs and containers and shit are in the world. And that is what uh, that is basically how it's drawn. So yeah, uh, we've got a list of tile maps. These are just all the tile maps in the scene. Uh, we've got a string for the last level loaded, uh, basically, so we can just check if the level has changed, and if it has, we'll redraw the map base. Uh, I've got a map area size, so this is basically just like sort of half a dimension, if that makes sense. So say if our map dimension is 50, we'll go from minus 50 to 50 on both X and Y, just to sort of give us an area to check for, you know, objects and parts of the town map and whatnot. And finally, we've got a public raw image, which is just part of the uh, Unity uh, new UI stuff. Well, not new, but, you know, the canvas stuff, uh, which is basically just what we draw the actual uh, map on. We can pass in a text to 2D, and that's what draws the map. Okay, so first off, on start, we call uh, generate map base. And basically, we create a new array of colors. Which, uh, oh, that's, sorry, I've not used the map area size, have I? Map area size times two. And I'll do that again for there. Because I wanted that to be two by two. There we go. Area size of two. Area size of two. This map area size. All right, just uh, get through these corrections quickly and I'll be right back with you. There we go. All right, so first off, to generate the map, area, map uh, base, we just start an array of colors to work out what color each pixel in the texture should be. So we just declare a new color array of map area size times two and times two again, so it's 2D array. Then we go through each of the tile maps. And uh, I think I covered it in my, uh, like getting uh, pathfinding nodes from my tile maps, but if you weren't there, uh, I will go through it and explain it briefly. Basically, we need to use uh, world coordinates to get tiles out of a tile map. So what we're doing here is just going from x equals minus map area size to x uh, 
is less, or while x is less than map area size. So since ours is 50, that'll be from minus 50 to 50, and we do the same for the y-axis. And these will basically give us the world coordinates to check for a uh, to check for if a tile is there. And at the same time, if we add uh, map, the map area size to that uh, x or y value, it'll give us an index for the 2D array that we can use to uh, set the uh, color in the array so we know it's in the right place in that. Because, you know, we've got 100 values and uh, x add 50. Well, since it starts at minus map area size, it will always be a value between 0 and 100. So it'll be the correct size. Uh, next, we just get a vector free in for the position in the world. We just pass in the x and y and 0. Then we get the tile from the current tile map in the loop. And if the tile is null, we skip. Else we call, uh, we get the color out of the sprite color database. So we just get me, I get color from sprite, and we pass in the uh, sorry, we're passing the sprite off that tile, so we have to cast it as a tile for some reason. I don't know why get tiles in that. You basically get tile returned a tile base, but you can pass in like a, just a, an argument for a tile. And that will just return a tile, and you can use that to get the sprite off it. So once that returns, I'll just go over that actually now. So sprite color database, uh, basically, we have a list of sprites, and then at the same end, we have a list of uh, colors. Uh, and say the indexes for the sprites and the colors for sprites match up. So uh, the sprite at sprite zero is represented by the color at index zero in this list. And then for get color, get map color from sprite. If sprites, if the sprite passed in isn't in the uh, sprites list, then we just return black. Otherwise, we get the index of that sprite, and then we return the color at that index. But since uh, I think it's when we're doing stuff in the inspector, so if I just uh, go to map container, it starts it as uh, having alpha of zero, so it'll just appear completely transparent. Uh, I had to just manually set the uh, alpha value to one, and then we just return that color. And that's how we get the colors. So if we if it's colored up black, we don't do anything. But if it's uh, an actual color, then we just uh, set that uh, current array index to be that color. And then after we've got all the uh, after we've got the color array filled. Uh, we set map base to be a new texture 2D of map area size times 2 times map area size times 2. So uh, in this case, it'd be 100 by 100. And for x, is it less than... I need to change that. And then we'll basically go through the... Uh, we'll loop through the uh, like size again, and then we could use map base set pixel. And it takes in the x and y coordinate and a color, and it sets that pixel. Then we call apply, and we set the last level loaded to be get active scene dot name, and that is what allows us to draw the map base here. Now, in order to draw like the actual elements in the uh, in the world, so like NPCs, the player, containers, and whatnot, we do a sort of similar thing. So here we have another method called generate texture with elements, which is called on update because we need to update the uh, positions of uh, update the positions of uh, oh, come on, of like NPCs and the player and shit every frame, rather as with the uh, actual the scene, we can just do it once when the scene's loaded. So first off, we find all the NPCs. We create a new texture, again, of size, map area, size times two. So 100 by 100 pixels. And we find all the containers in the world. And we go through each of the containers. And if we add uh, the game objects transform the position to x and y to the map area size again like with the uh what we were doing with when we were generating the map base that will give us an index between 1 and 100 
assuming that they are within that uh, 100 by 100 area that we are use, checking for elements in a map, because if not, then they won't get drawn, or we're probably goes in that range exception, but as long as you're careful with your mapping, or with your level building and the size that you've declared, then you should be fine. So yeah, so this is basically just round to int the uh, X and Y positions of the objects, and then add map area size to turn that into an index between zero and the map area size times two. And then we just set that pixel to be a specific color. So in this case, containers are blue. I should probably say men, actually, because people always tell me to, and it always defaults to not zoomed in. And I don't know why. That's annoying. But yeah. So yeah, and for each NPC, we do the same thing. So we just round the uh, transform dot position to an integer, and then add the map area size. And then we set the pixel in the objects and world texture. And we do the same for the player. And then we just apply that to the objects and world texture. Uh, now we create a new texture called merged. So this is, again, it's map area size times two, map area size times two. We say texture format RGBA32. I'm not quite sure what that means, but you know, it gives you a texture. Uh, I believe that's map mapping. Yeah, we don't want mip mapping or whatever linear is, so we just set them both to false. And then again, then uh, we go through each of the uh, textures. Oh, sorry, we go through, finally, we go do another loop. So we go from x equals 0 to map area size times 2, and y equals 0 map area size times 2. And then we get the uh, pixels from object and world. Uh, so again, objects and world is... What's one? Objects of world is like the uh, NPCs and players and shit. And then if the alpha value of that pixel is less than one. So basically, uh, the default value for a. Well, when we declare. Sorry, I'll go back up here. When we're declaring a text with 2D of like map area size times two or a color array or something, the default color is a sort of semi transparent gray. I believe it's like. If it was RGBA, it would be 0 0.8 all the, all the way. So if we check for like a semi-transparent pixel, so if the alpha value is less than zero, <coughs> well, no, there was nothing at that pixel. So we can just set it to be whatever the map base was. So in that case, we can just set merge to set pixel X, Y, and map base dot get pixel. But if the value wasn't less than one, so we did set it to be something, whether it be container, NPC, or whatnot, then we can just set merge dot set pixel to x and y to whatever the objects and world dot get pixel was. And finally, we add uh, we set merge dot filter mode to filter mode dot point, which just gives us that uh, sort of like sharp look to it. And finally, we set uh, display dot texture to be equal to the merged texture. So display is just our display here. Uh, that's it. Oh, and this is just the uh, check for whether the last level loaded is equal to the get active scene name. And find tile maps basically just finds all the tile maps in a scene and adds them to the list of tile maps list. Okay. Uh, one other thing I added uh, also just to keep the uh, canvas going through scenes is this uh, don't destroy on load. So say if we were like, well, basically this just, uh, we have to, uh, sorry, words are escaping me today. Basically it just stops the canvas game objects to get destroyed between scenes. So we don't have to recreate it. And, but since this is on actually a game object that's a child of the canvas, we have to say this dot game object dot transform dot parent dot game object. We don't want to destroy and load, which is a bit convoluted. But what that's basically saying is that we don't want the parent of this object that I've got selected here to be destroyed on loading, which is this canvas. And that will make sure that all the things here are uh, not destroyed. Uh, also, another thing I had an issue with was, it was quite an odd one, actually. Uh, basically, when I was transitioning between scenes, I the canvas would stop working. 
but it would still work in the uh, like original scene here. I believe that was because I didn't have an event system, or if I did, it was being destroyed. Yeah, because I see I've got an event system here, but that would get destroyed when I change scene. So what I've done is I've added this event system here to this and added a standalone input module, which you can do. I think I can, you can just, uh, yeah. So if that's not on there, you can just add an event system and add default import modules and that adds that. Uh, that is what you should try doing if you have an issue with like you canvas UI stopping working because that was a pain in the ass for me to find out. But yeah, uh, what else? I don't think there's anything else. So, can you do done that, done that, done that, done that? I didn't actually have that anymore. So yeah, so that was pretty. <coughs> Sorry. So yeah, that was pretty much it for a mini map. Much simpler if you're using tile maps. Uh, you could probably apply this principle to like a, a 3D game as well. Maybe uh, like if you're using a height map or something or another. Uh, you could also make the maps look a bit fancier. Say if you had like preset textures that you draw at the uh, player's location using that as like a center or something. If you wanted them to just be more than colored squares, you know, that's your goal. It's something should be fairly easy to do and yeah so we can see that we've got maps we got objects represented on the maps we've not got like a thing but whatever and if we change scene the map gets redrawn to reflect that and the best part is that we're not using another camera and a render texture because that is probably somewhat inefficient because having a second camera rendering everything it's like double the load on the gpu or something so yeah that is how to do a mini map. So cheers for watching, like, comment, subscribe, all that shit. Uh, apparently I might get deep partnered or something because uh, I've not got 4,000 hours watch time in the last year. I think I'm at 1,600 or something. So yeah, that'd be fun for all the no money I was making off these adverts. But yeah, uh, go check out Loud or Quiet. It's on Steam. It's my baby. Uh, what I was working on for uh, like two years while I was doing my uni degree. Uh, it's like bad hotline Miami fan fiction, so that's always fun. But I'm quite proud of it. Uh, yeah, and go check out all my other shit on itch.io and whatnot. And yeah, so cheers for watching and goodbye.